Our staff just got them uh, yesterday, and we're all feeling great. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we feel like it is, so that's all that really matters, right? Uh, we are going to ask you to still adhere to the rules that we have in terms of when you get up from your table to put that mask on until uh, we get such time as we can kind of relax on that. But for right now, I think we're going to continue with that. So please be sure to put your mask on if you get up from the table to go to the bathroom. Uh, a couple of things. What's that? Griff wants to know if they want to dance. No dancing. No dancing. Now, if you can clog, you can come right there, right there, and you can clog your heart's content. But I'm just kidding. Uh, the, the other announcement I want to make is that there is a tip jar up here that we affectionately call Philip, Philip the tip jar. And it looks like uh, whatever, $50, $100. Perfect. Not really, anything you want. But I will point out that uh, Philip is non-denominational. So he accepts, uh, or she uh, accepts, um, Ulysses S. Grant, Ben Franklin, <laughs> and any other dead president that you would like to put in there. Um, a few of these folks came from Nashville, so they probably need some gas money going back. Um, are y'all going back this evening? No. Yep, yep. nope, okay. <laughs> Inconclusive. <laughs> It depends how much gas money we get. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We might be you may have to stay here. Tomorrow. Well, if you stay, we can get you to play again. Well, we're real pleased to have this young lady back again. I think she just won a, uh, a Golden Guitar Award in Australia. So, yeah. And I think that's your fifth one down there. Yeah. That's, yep. You got the bluegrass market cornered down there, don't you? <laughs> but, you know... For any, <laughs> for any of you folks that are visiting tonight and, uh, you know, enjoy hearing southern accents, we're going to go even further south tonight with this young lady because she's from Australia, but she didn't bring a knife with her tonight. All right, guys, y'all ready for some live music? All right, please put your hands together for Christy Cox, right? wasn't true, back to mine and straight to you. that 
wasn't true. Back to mine, they're straight to you. Call it luck, call it fate. It's ricochet, 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 ricochet. Thank you. Well, how are we, Asheville? Are we good? We're doing well? It is so good to be playing live music again. This is our second show in like seven weeks and both of them have been here at the Isis Music Hall. So a big thank you to Scott and the team for having us back again. Actually, we've played four shows in the last 12 months and all four have been here at the Isis Music Hall. <laughs> thank you for keeping live music alive. We, um, it's certainly been a very, very odd 12 months, we released an album back in February, two weeks before the pandemic, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's really good to see you guys. How have you been? You been good? Yeah. You did have a birthday. My little boy had a birthday on Saturday. I have a little two-year-old now. Wish me luck, everybody. He's officially hit the terrible twos. I actually think law school the better. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If he wants to play guitar, he can play guitar. Uh, I'm going to do a song for you that's my latest single. It just got released to radio a couple of weeks ago. And I was pitched this song by a friend of mine, Jerry Sally, who's produced my last five, six, six albums. And um, it just reminds me of my poppy and my daddy back home. And, and I miss them a lot. So, uh, yeah, this is for all the good men out there. It's called Everyday Man. Three, four. <laughs> Just to praise the Lord awaken up the day Takes his King James to the table Sips his coffee And gathers strength As he turns each yellow page For oh, those words are the only truth he lives by And every neighbor's need becomes his very own if he looks you in the eye, you know he means it. And the man you see is the same good man at home. He's an everyday man with an everyday life. Don't seem like much looking in from the outside. And what you cannot see what you need to understand it's an everyday thing that makes an everyday man a whole day's worth of work is on his farm the sun is setting as he wrestles with his force holds the only girl He never had a choice He's an everyday man With an everyday life Don't seem like much Looking in from the outside But what you cannot see Is what you need to understand It's an everyday thing an everyday man One day his face will show the weather and lies Age will always chase us down and steal our time But when he's gay his soul will surely read Cause everything he taught will help her An everyday man with an everyday life Don't seem like much looking in from the outside 
But what you cannot see is what you need to understand. It's an everyday thing. It makes an everyday Thank you. Is there anyone here from out of town? Woo, woo, woo. Where are we all from? Ohio. 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 Wisconsin. So you're all from up north, right? They're all north of here? A little bit. I have no idea. <laughs> Australia has the same land mass as the lower 48 states, but we only have five states and two territories. So it's easier to remember. <laughs> we're in North Carolina? Yeah, we're in North Carolina. Oh, that's good to know. Make Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that much. Okay. <laughs> we're going to do a song I recorded a couple of albums ago, and... Um, this one went all the way to number one on the bluegrass radio charts here in the States. It's called Almost Smell the Smoke. One, two, three. <laughs> American winter. See, I've been living here for seven years, I guess. But uh, we always go home to Australia over the winter because, um, well, I'm from Australia and I don't like the winter. <laughs> Where I grew up, the coldest it would get would be, I guess, the equivalent to the 50s if we're talking in Fahrenheit. I still work in Celsius. My phone still tells me what the temperature is going to be in Celsius because 
I kind of, if I see my phone telling me it's over 100, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but uh, it still confuses me. I don't understand how freezing is 32 degrees. To me, that's like T-shirt and short weather. So um, my phone's still on Celsius, but yeah, we usually go home to the Tamworth Country Music Festival every January and see all our, our family and friends. My husband's Australian as well. And, and so uh, this was interesting. We, we experienced our first snow in Nashville. Um, we've, we've had a little bit, you know, where it kind of hits the ground and it melts. Uh, or maybe, maybe it might hit the ground and stick for about five minutes. But we got nearly a foot of snow in Nashville a few weeks ago. And my daughter thought it was the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> and she's got on this sled. Now, I've never sledded in my life. Like, and I'm like... <gasps> she's gonna die and she just goes down the hill and I'm like all right I can do this then and I get on there and I'm like duh, 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 duh. yeah I'm <sighs> to have the energy of a five-year-old that thinks that sledding's cool I think if I was a kid I re really would have liked it but it just kind of scared me so after eight days of being stuck in our house because we couldn't get up and down our driveway with the snow I decided I don't like winter so um it was fun while it lasted, but you guys can keep the snow. If anyone wants to join me in Australia next January, feel free. Hot. Hot. Yeah, yeah it's hot. hot. I took these guys to Australia in January, and that's the peak of our summer. So we're talking 121 degrees Fahrenheit a day yeah. and a dry heat, like Arizona-type heat. So I love it. I think it's great. Griff was not very happy with me. That was a van. Was oh, yeah, we had a van that didn't have any air conditioning. Well, I hadn't seen the front. And uh, we called it the Venga bus. You know, the Venga bus is coming. Yeah, anyway. Touring Australia with Christy is always fun. <laughs> but we're going to feature the guys here on this next song. This was written by a local, I believe. Is that right? Ralph Lewis. Yeah, Ralph Lewis. This one's called 40 West. <laughs> Bluegrass music, everyone. 
so good for your fitness levels, you know? <laughs> I realised how out of fit I've got since I haven't been playing so much music on stage. I had to join the gym. The gym. And I, uh, I started Orange Theory Fitness. Has anyone heard of this? I think they're trying to kill me, exactly. I was trying to think of a polite way to put it, but I, there is none. Yeah, my first class, I burnt like 1,300 calories in one class. It was, and I was like, <laughs> so anyway, bluegrass music, it's good for your fitness. <laughs> I feel like I could just do a gig instead, it'd be way more fun. <laughs> We're gonna do a song that I wrote when I first moved to America. And uh, I, I moved over, I, I grew up in a little town called Adelaide in South Australia in the Adelaide Hills, and I moved over with a guitar and a suitcase and about $3,000 in the bank, which wasn't going to get me very far, but that's okay. I figured it, the worst that could happen is that I call mummy and daddy and say, can you please book me a plane fare home? Because, you know, but it didn't happen. I'm, I'm still here, so I'm very lucky. But I was also carrying a broken heart. So I sat down with a friend of mine, Johnny Duke, and we decided that the best thing to fix a broken heart would be to write a nice, fun, up-tempo bluegrass song. So we drank two bottles of red wine, and uh, this is what we came up with. <laughs>
It is a good happy bluegrass song, right? I thought so. But, uh, I'd like to welcome up the newest member of our band to the microphone. I only found out that this fella could sing the last gig we did. So uh, Kat is out the back. And he can sing higher than me. I don't know. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Grayson Tuttle. singing Desperado, so the next time we come here, we may try and do a bluegrass do duet a with a piano. No, <laughs> we just, you know, it could be fun. It's probably been you? done. Does he have to play for you while you sing and try to beat him? No, he's going to play piano while I sing, and then I'm going to play banjo while he sings. <laughs> and then you guys so you can, can be the judge it. of who wins. <laughs> All right. that's no, that's not very fair. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't play banjo. <laughs> it's not overly fair. Fair rulings, is it? But that's okay. Ah, we're all here to have fun. Is anyone here in love tonight? Did anyone fall in love during the pandemic? Yeah, there we go. That's good. If you can fall in love during a pandemic, you know you found a good one. Because there were moments with my husband where I was like, whoo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I discovered why it's really important to marry your best friend. Because uh, when you're stuck in a house with them for 12 months, it's... Uh, whew. We bought a hot tub, so that helped. Oh, yeah. So I don't see him anymore now. He's just in the hot tub. And, um, it's good. <laughs> and I made him renovate our bathroom. 
projects. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do a song that I recorded for my hubby. Travis, my husband, he, he, was, he grew up in the same town as me and he moved to Nashville 10 years before me and um, I moved all the way over to America to marry a man from my hometown. But uh, I recorded this song for him and it's called this. country music and uh, bluegrass music. I grew up listening to a lot of Flat and Scruggs and Bill Monroe and, and Hank Williams, Loretta Lynn, Emily Harris, all of those ones. And uh, Death Leopard, Pink Floyd, ACDC of course, I'm Australian. But uh, <laughs> no seriously I did. <laughs> I had a well-rounded musical influence as a kid. But uh, probably my favourite songwriter of all time is Hank Williams, so we're going to do one of his ones for you now. Hey, good looking, what you got cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? Yeah. 
Traveling with Griff, you've got to make sure you stop for food every two hours. And um, it is true. We learnt the hard way in both Australia and, and Ireland, because unlike America, not everything's open all the time. So uh, we had to take snack packs for Griff. What are you talking about? I'm talking snack about you needing snack packs. I eat all my son's snack packs. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Get the best food in the house. <laughs> Would you please welcome up to the microphone, Mr. Griff Martin. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're going to do an old traditional song that was recorded by a lot of people called Upon the Blue Ridge Mountain. Well, upon the Blue Ridge Mountain, there I'll take my stand. Well, upon the Blue Ridge Mountain, Lord, there I'll take my stand. With a rifle on my shoulder, six shooter in my hand, I've been all around this world. tour a lot actually. We, um, we've been to uh, Europe and Ireland and well, actually we haven't been to Europe have we just we were meant to go to Europe that's right. May 2020 was going to be our big 30 show tour of Europe. 2022 we're going to be there if you're watching in Europe we're coming for you 2022. Can everyone say hi to everyone watching at home? Big hello. Hi. I don't know where to look but <laughs> 
I think it's so so exciting that you can watch shows from your computer in your lounge room, and um, it's kind of scary at the same time for us artists because we go home and we can watch it back, and it's not always exciting to watch yourself back. <laughs> A lounge room. lounge room. What do you call it? A den. A den. Living room. Living room. Living room. A lounge room. No, a lounge room. I like a lounge room better. Yeah, because it's where you lounge. I like a lounge room much better. Yeah. Sounds more like a so do you call it a living room set or a lounge yeah. suite set? What do you mean, like a set of chairs? Like your, your sofas that you sit on. Oh, a set. I think about a set like a table and chairs. No, no, no. That's a dining set. A dining no, we're talking set. about a different room of the house here. Is it a sofa? I mean, where did this guy grow up? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we call it a lounge. A Do you guys set. call it a lounge? A dining set and a lounge set. A lounge room. Okay. So where did I grow up? That's the real question. I'm confused now. <laughs> it doesn't take much, Griff. It doesn't it take doesn't much. Take much. <laughs> We're going to do a song that I wrote about my home, Australia. A lot of people may not know, but it was the first country in the world to allow women to immigrate by themselves. They didn't have to be married or coming with their parents. They could just go to Australia by themselves and um, personally I think it's because there was a shortage of women and um, <laughs> they needed nurses and things yeah so but anyway I think it's a really cool piece of Australian history so we wrote a song just about that about how they used to have posters in the street in England saying come on come on down under and girls did it girls did it my 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 nana was one of them she was 17 and got on a boat Three months on a boat. It's a long way. <laughs> Griff goes, a bunch of women on a boat for three months. Oof. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to ignore him momentarily. <laughs> this one's called Sweet English Rose. On the docks at Southampton, just barely 17 when she struck out on her own. Buoyed by her youth, on a boat full of strangers, bound for Tasmania, just women and girls. Charlotte will come. To build a new future at the end of the world As history recalls in the late 1860s Four lots of women came over the seas Only heaven could know where the future would go Life changed forever for this
didn't have that much But what they had was plenty Love and a family in a home of their own As history records in the late 1860s Boloes of women came over the seas Only heaven could know Where the future would go Life changed forever for this sweet English road Mr. Andrew Platt. Yeah. He keeps the groove going, you know. Because it's all about the bass, about the bass. No problem. My daughter has decided that she wants to listen to pop music. And uh, she's, she's six years old and, you know, she goes upstairs and I tell her that she can't watch too much television but she can... She can listen to some music if she likes, and then I hear Shake It Off by Taylor Swift come on. And I go, you know what, honey? You can watch as much Dino Dana as you want. Go right ahead. I mean, Taylor Swift is a talented songwriter, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think it's appropriate for a six-year-old to be singing Shake It Off. <laughs> but, you know. Then again, I used to get... I, I grew up singing talent quests, and I, you know, I started at 11 years old, and... We, we, we were singing country music, so there's not many age-appropriate songs for an 11-year-old in country music. And I used to get on my judge sheets all the time, you know, please pick a song that's age-appropriate. And I'm like, what's wrong with Shania Twain? Woman enough. <laughs> 
I mean, that's an age-appropriate song for an 11-year-old, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Don't worry about me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> He's saving me up here. That's what you're here for, Griff. Well, I've had some train wrecks here. <laughs> <laughs> you have. Oh, Remember yeah. that one time? Keep a B flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to do a song off of my new album for you, and... um. My latest album, I should say. We're getting ready to go back into the studio here really shortly, which seems kind of crazy because I haven't even really toured this album yet, but we're doing it anyway. So, But uh, this is probably my personal favourite song on the album. And uh, it's about how not everybody grieves the same way and sometimes we're not ready to let go. And uh, So uh, this one's called So Many Rainy Days. friends up here to sing a song. <laughs> Dave, Dave's been in my band since I moved to America. I, um, I recorded an album here in Arden, North Carolina. And I met a, met a guy named Darren Nicholson. Do you guys know who Darren is? Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I called him when I was getting ready to move over and I had a gig. Where was that show? Uh, uh, the old school Val rock. Valdez, North Carolina. Valdez, North Carolina. I said, I've got my first ever gig in America and I don't have a band. Can you help me? And uh, so he, he got me a band together and um, Dave... And I'm sorry this is the best I could do. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Dave was in that band and he's been here with us. Thank you so much. He's been here with us ever since. And um, I love him to bits. I don't know what I'd do without him. Mr. David Penley. Well, nothing says bluegrass like uh, murder and mayhem, right? So let's, <laughs> let's, let's kill somebody here. How about uh, Wild Bill Jones? Huh? As I went out, boy, they make a little round Around across that wild Bill Jones He was a-walking and a-talking by my true lover's side I bid him to leave her alone From my side And I destroyed that poor boy's soul Well he reeled and he staggered And he fell to the ground He gave I put my arms around my little girl's neck Saying, honey, won't you take me home? Well, put those handcuffs on me, boys Take me to that freight yard gate For I have no friends or relations there No one to call my name Today is the last of Wild Bill Jones, and tomorrow will be the last of me. Thank you. Oh, thanks for the yeah. you want to do that? We can do that. We can do that now. Sure. Bill Terry with Western Rocky? Good. Yeah. Oh. Chris just changing the set list. <laughs> Throwing in a request, you know. Somebody calling all of them. Oh, well, thanks. You're not getting a pay rise, but thank you. <laughs> We're, um, this is the first song I ever sang on stage. I don't know who did this song originally, actually. If anyone knows, please let me know. But, um, I, I, I first heard the Emily Harris version on her Blue Kentucky Girl album. And, um, it was the first album I ever bought with my own money. And, um, she's the reason I play bluegrass, literally. <laughs> I, um, I met her in 2007 at IBMA and I was singing country pop like all the other girls my age and I wasn't very happy about it. And um, She told me that if I followed my heart, other people would enjoy what I'm doing more than if I wasn't following my heart. So I decided to play bluegrass because that's what I love. And um, she was right. We're enjoying ourselves. <laughs> 
Well, at least we are. I hope you guys are too. You enjoying yourself? Yeah? Did anyone get the chicken sandwich? How good is the chicken sandwich? The same. I said sandwich like an American just then. Did you notice that? How did you segue into a sandwich after that story you just told? I have no idea. <laughs> now, that's ADHD if I ever saw it. Matter of sandwich. Talk about going down an ADHD rabbit hole. You know? <laughs> Maybe I didn't have lunch. I don't know. Anyway. I'm a woman and I've been stuck in the house for 12 months. Leave me alone. This is Don't This Road Look Rough and Rocky with a chicken sandwich. song. Well, it's not really a new song. It's a, it's a song that we used to do a long time ago and we thought we'd... Um, it's a new song. 
bring it out of the woodworks, I guess. It is indeed. It's, um, it was recorded by one of my favourite female bluegrass artists, Carrie Haslow. Does anyone know Carrie Haslow? If you haven't heard of her, go and check her out. She's incredible. Absolutely. When I grow up, I want to be just like her. It's funny. I was um, reading this... Uh, magazine article the other day and it said that if you have a side part in skinny jeans you're officially in your 30s because apparently that's how they know that you're old or something this is what this is what they're saying these young the young what is the next generation I have no idea apparently middle parts and flares are in and I'm sitting there going I wore the flares in the 90s I am not going back to flares like it's not it's just not happening so uh, my local Mexican restaurant put a sign out the front today and said you know what something that girls with side parts and skinny jeans can do, water margaritas. So, I was like, amen. Yeah. <laughs> and this song has absolutely nothing to do. See, margaritas chicken and chicken sandwich. sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm lost again. Uh, anyway, poor Dave. We're going to do this one for you. It's called fun. Seven Miles from Wichita. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Seven miles from Wichita, heading back to Omaha, stuck in traffic all because I've got to get to you. I left to make it all. song with an Australian accent. I think it'd be good. Don't y'all want to hear that? Yeah. 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 See else wants to hear that. <laughs> Darling, I have come to tell you, though it almost breaks my heart. I, I, I can't do it. It's, I don't know why. There are, some, there are some incredible Australian singers that sing with Australian accent, accents, and I am not one of them. 
I am not, I, can, I just can't do it. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I'm sorry, Griff. It's all right. We'll work on it. Why don't you sing a song in an Australian accent? Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Who wants to hear Griff sing a song in an Australian accent? I'd end up sounding like an Outback commercial or something. <laughs> uh, well, we might sing a song about North Carolina. I love North Carolina. And, um, I grew up in the hills of South Australia and... I guess um, whenever I'm feeling homesick, I, I head to the mountains, which is here, because it makes me feel like I'm kind of at home. And um, I think these fellows up here have a big part of, to do with that, because they're pretty much my family. Can you make welcome Mr. John Duncan on the fiddle? <laughs> David Penley on mandolin. <laughs> Andrew Platt on the bass. <laughs> Griff Martin on guitar. And Grayson Tuttle on banjo. And the infamous Mrs. Christy Cox, everybody. Well, I wrote this song about my life and how I never dreamed that a little girl from South Australia would be singing at the Isis Music Hall in North Carolina. But here I am. It doesn't get any cooler than this, people. This is called South to North Carolina. <laughs> just as you're crossing the border. That would be cool. The streaming royalties I'd get would be huge. Like a whole 17 cents, probably. At least. Don't you reckon? Definitely. Definitely. 17 cents, for sure. Spotify would give you at least a nickel. <laughs> I figured out how I can make money out of Spotify. I'm, I'm going to go and get a job at Spotify. <laughs> I like it. Does anyone know anybody that can hook me up? Yeah, if you get 500,000 plays in every version of the <laughs> Yeah, I could rig the system. <coughs> so if they listen to a hip hop channel, all of a sudden South to North Carolina comes on. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. It's a good business plan, Griff. 
<sighs> we might do this song for you. This is uh, the first song I ever recorded and released as a single back in Australia. And at the time, I was making that shift from country pop to bluegrass, and I wasn't entirely sure that the audience back home was going to, you know, like it, I guess, so to speak. And I needed a little bit of faith at the time, and I re recorded this song and released it first, and it was my first ever number one. It's called That's Where the Faith Comes In. That you grew up in Franklin. Franklin. Okay, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> and uh, he's from Morganton, North Carolina. Dave is. You're from New York. He's yeah. our. He's yeah. our. Yeah. our um, token New Yorker. Up the back here. Andrew's from New York. Griff is from Winston Salem. Yep, I live here. And you are from Wilkes. <gasps> Look at me. Yeah. And where am I from? Down under. Down under. <laughs> <coughs> Mount, Mount Barker is where I'm from. Adelaide. Mount Barker. Mount Barker. Uh, could you get more Mount Australian Barker. than that? Mount Barker. It's not like a Boston accent. Mount Barker. Well, I get asked if I'm from Boston all the time. I I don't hear it. I, I've been to Boston. I don't I don't know. Are you sure you're from Australia? 
the, you know, did you know that the world is actually flat and it, all of us are paid actors oh. from Australia? Have you guys read that? <laughs> Have you guys seen that going around the internet? Apparently the world is flat and all of the Australians in the world, are, we actually are paid actors. So if anyone knows where I can go and collect my cheque, that would be amazing. <laughs> We're going to do this one last song. Thank you so much for having us. We've had an absolute ball tonight and we really appreciate you all coming out. And for those of you at home, thank you so much for watching at home. And um, I believe there's a PayPal link that you can donate some love to. And uh, don't forget about Philip. Thank you so much for having us. This one's called Train. One, two. Train on a runaway, one-way track, just like me. You've been trying to hide